Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your process, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. Today is March 5th of 2019, and this is episode number 19 titled Split Testing for WordPress Just Got Easy with our first time guest and longtime friend, Adam Lacey. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. Good morning, Matt. How are things in New Hampshire today? Cold, Kyle. It is real cold here, but that's all right. I'm inside in front of a computer and uh, nice and warm. Um, I'm really excited about... Well, I got to shut my Alexa off because... Sorry. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> the trigger word or the keyword or hot word, whatever you want to call it, is computer. Um, so yeah, we're going to silence that. But uh, no, I'm really excited about today's episode because uh, we've got Adam Lacey here. He's a cool dude. He's got a really awesome project. And I've actually started talking it up to some of my clients that uh, I know are going to be interested in it. So um, Yes, I have too. Yeah. For sure. Now you you said it's cold there, but yesterday I saw that it was actually colder here in Granbury, Texas, than it was in Juneau, Alaska. No. So kidding. I might have you beat. It's okay. pretty cold. Hell is it's, freezing over. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Hell is freezing over. All right. Before we say hello to our guests, I did want to let you guys know about next week's show. Before I plug it at the end, me and Matt are going to do kind of a solo show together where we're going to be talking about the biggest lessons we've learned in the first 19 episodes. So if you're fairly new to the group and the show, it's gonna be a cool recap of kind of our biggest takeaways. And we're also gonna be answering some uh, questions from the group. We've already gotten quite a few submitted, but there is a thread going in the group right now where people are asking questions and me and Matt are gonna do our best to answer those next week. So make sure you join us. Uh, I'll post a link to that show probably tomorrow. All right, so let's get to it. Let's say hello today to today's guest, Adam Lacey from Split Hero. Hello and good afternoon, Adam. How are you today? Hey, yeah, not bad, thank you. How about yourself? Excellent. Had to get through my long-windedness here. I'm going to let you do most of the talking <laughs> after this, but why don't you uh, give the folks a little bit of intro about yourself, how you ended up on the admin bar today, and what you got going on? Yeah, sure. So my name's Adam Lacey. Uh, as you can probably tell, I'm from the UK in the Southwest. Um, I have been running a agency for about seven to eight years now. Um, and more recently, I've embarked on the journey of becoming a SaaS founder, owner, pretender, whatever you want to call it, um, and started launching a platform called Split Hero to allow people to split test on WordPress more easily. Which is something that's definitely needed. Yes. I mean, the the options that are out there right now are are not real easy to use. Um, and I mean, enough so that I just don't fool with it for the most part. So why is it that we're how many years into WordPress and it's taken uh, you to come in and come up with a good solution for doing this? Why is this taking so long? Yeah, um, to be honest, I'm not sure. I think it's a tricky one because, I mean, although we are currently sort of working at well to be honest we only plan to work with wordpress for the foreseeable future um, but we are a SaaS platform where i guess a lot of people think you know if you just work with wordpress you're a plugin which is not really the case for us um but yeah i think for a long time there was people like optimizely and i think it's vwo or someone like that they were pretty good um but they've completely changed their market and really gone to the enterprise tier so it's now to the point they don't even advertise their pricing on their websites um so really it's about like you say the options are out there are either free and complex or expensive and complex so um, we're trying to hit the affordable and user-friendly market which most wordpress users you know tend to be so yeah that's definitely where we're trying to market it's a bit here at that's awesome. So I've used things like uh, like Google's system. I've tried to go in there and try to set up yeah. things with that to try to split test stuff. And I failed way more times than I actually succeeded in making a split test happen. Uh, and I pulled my hair out in the process. So it really wasn't worth it to me. So tell me a little bit about how Split Hero is going to be different and why it's going to be easy. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, really, I guess it's going to be the... Being a SaaS, it allows us to do everything we want to do, but by we'll have basically a plugin you upload to your website on WordPress to connect the platform to the website. And by doing this, it allows us to do everything we need to do from the complex side, 
but wrapping a really nice user friendly UI um, and it dynamically pulls everything in that we'd need to know. So from a user point of view, it just gives you the options you need without overwhelming you. And likewise, when it comes to gathering that data as well, the, the whole idea is not to throw everything at the user, but to give them the data they only need really. So um, they can actually take action because otherwise you end up with mountains of data and you don't even know where to start. So um, that that's key really. It's really about being more user-friendly from a UI point of view. And like you say, Google is good, but um, yeah, it's really, it can be real tricky to set up and, you know, agency owners, business owners are busy anyway. So this is to literally get up and running within about 30 seconds to a minute and you'll be up and running. Wow, that's fast. Yes. Yeah, so walk us a little bit through how this is going to work. So let's say I have a landing page I'm testing and I just want to I just want to swap out uh, the hero section. Let's say I got a background photo and I want to test out two different ones. So walk me through kind of what I would need to do to set up a test like that. Sure. So how we do it is based on rather than uh, a lot of other products out there use JavaScript to dynamically change the elements on the page. Um, we don't do that. We actually do redirects based on pages. So what you would do is, let's say, say if you had your home page, which is your core home page, um, you could then duplicate that with one of the many plugins out there or just create a complete new one from scratch. Um, and then basically you would log into Split Hero, create a new campaign. It would say, um, name the campaign would be your first step. So, yeah, name it what you want. Next step, and then it'll give you a plugin. You literally install that and put the API key in for your account. And then uh, the next stage is literally it will dynamically pulling all your posts and pages. So, you will see both pages you've created. So, for example, if you called it home page and home page two, um, you'd see that on the drop down. So, you literally select okay, so URL A is going to be home page, URL B is going to be home page two. Um, and then you can put start and end dates in place and then literally go through, make sure everything looks good and start the campaign and that's it. And then it will get up and running. And then basically um, our platform will, will dynamically convert visitors between both variations for you. It will collect the um, user rate, the hit rate, bounce rate, time on page. It's basically the core data premises um, and we'll display that in the Split Hero dashboard for you. And at the end of the campaign, we'll send you an email to log in and have a look and we'll show you which one basically leads to more conversions. So we'll ask for a conversion URL. Um, so for a landing page, normally you'll have a, a contact form or something like that, or an inquiry form, which will go through to a thank you page. So as part of that setup process, when you have the drop downs, you'll select your pages and then you'll select a conversion page, which will be your thank you page. So as you go through, like I said, the more people that land on one of those pages and goes through as a conversion, We'll basically do all the data for you and show you which one actually performs better. That sounds perfect. That sounds yeah. like exactly the answer I need. I mean, I think part of the thing when you when you talk about doing it with like JavaScript or even Elementor has a plugin. There, somebody yes. made an add-on for Elementor where you can change stuff. It's kind of confusing to me the way it works, so I just hadn't messed with it a whole lot. I know Dave Foy's uh, talked about it quite a bit and has tested out um, using it. Um, but the thought that I can just duplicate a page, give you two different URLs and press go and it be done is a whole lot easier in my opinion. And, and just to get some like clear, concise data at the end of the, the test that I'm not having to like have a, you know, some science degree to go <laughs> math degree to go figure out how how all this translates to to usable data for me. So that sounds awesome. Matt, are you doing any kind of split testing right now? <clears throat> no, not right now, but I, uh, I absolutely will be using this for uh, for one of my country clubs that I work with. Um, they do landing pages all the time, especially this time of year. There's uh, there's a lot of weddings, there's a lot of events, and yeah. um, you know the those types. And actually, um, I have a monthly uh, meeting with them, like regarding how their site's performing and this, that, and the other thing. And I did tease that the. Uh, that Split Hero is coming out soon, and and you know once we have a license, we'll be able to start making changes and actually seeing that effect. Um, and you know, for example, uh, this actually was mentioned because the the team over there, I had uh, I had like this um, like coral pink, like very uh, like 
this year's like color palette for uh, for weddings, yeah. etc. Um, on this landing page, the uh, the team, however, they weren't really feeling it. They wanted some uh, like a, like more of a pastel purple, um, and that would be a, a perfect example of you know just a small split test. Because and this is something that I want to get in with you, uh, Adam, is that. You know, for the people that haven't played around with split taste, uh, bleh, split tasting, split testing, you or know, split tasting, what are uh, what are the elements that you should be changing? How many? Um, you know, do you want to change an entire page, or do you just change like you know the color of a, a single button and see if that that works? Um, you know, what are the what are the use cases? Um, who can use it? Um, you know, we've we've been talking about how to set it up and how it functions, but. Um, I think we should reverse a little bit and, and start talking about, you know, use cases and and, uh, and the types of people that should be split testing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, like I say, your example there with a landing page was a perfect example of, like, say, where you could kind of, because I think we've all had occasions when we're sort of like, we kind of feel we know best, but the client always feels like they know best. So this way you can kind of take both your egos out of it in a way and be like, okay, look, let's do this. Yeah, just bring it back down to the better. science. Yeah, exactly. And then they can't argue with the fact that <laughs> if they get more inquiries, they're not going to turn around and say, no, we want less inquiries. So <laughs> that's never going to happen. Um, so, but yeah, in terms of what to test, it's, I am a fan of doing two completely different designs but not many people do. Um, but I think the core premise is to whatever you test, try and keep it quite tight and refined in terms of only doing a couple of elements at once. Otherwise you don't know what quite works. Um, like I say, I would only do real massive different home or different pages if you've got enough traffic. So if you're running ads or something like that and you're getting quite a lot of traffic for it, you could run two different layouts, for example, completely uh, and see which one uh, makes the difference. Mm -hmm. um, but generally speaking, uh, classic one is changing images out for videos to, for user engagement purposes to see if, what effect that has. Obviously, um, changing row positioning as well. So for example, you might be okay, the testimonial rows here, but let's move it up and see if, if that makes a difference. All little things like this, obviously, like say, um, button colors and you know bits and pieces but yeah i try and say do maybe one or two elements at once and then you know what works um and the split testing is never done so you can change one or two elements and then you you might not really have much of a winner so you go okay well let's try something else or you might have a really good winner and you go okay but you still go well we pick that winner and let's play with something else and you keep trying to improve it and obviously the more you improve it the more it's going to be better for your client um and the more they value they see as well so yeah it really, it really does make a big difference i think for clients to be able to see that hard data yeah and, and yeah. you had mentioned um you know just changing a few aspects at a time which that's important because if you change too much then you don't know what you know that uh it, what it's correlating yeah. to like what what's bringing in that new traffic so typically definitely try to keep it down to to a couple elements at a time and yeah absolutely you... yeah like you say if you just change too much then you go great it worked but you don't know what worked <laughs> exactly so, well, yeah. i got a bit of a scenario here so i figure it might be kind of neat to just workshop through this project with me because it's a real life example and it's something probably a lot of us could face i kind of have a plan in mind of what i'm going to do once i'm installing split hero on this domain um but i want I want to get your opinion. You kind of give me some feedback on this since you are the expert in this. So uh, basically what I have is a customer of mine. It runs a company that does Google AdWord campaigns, right? And so all of his customers are in a niche for like a home service industry. So he runs Google ads for these things. They come to a landing page um, and then we try to snag the traffic, you know, snag customers from that. So we've actually come up with uh, <clears throat> probably four or five different completely unique landing pages that don't look anything similar. Um, and we've kind of tested all those and seen what our conversions are, but we've been testing them through different companies in different areas and stuff. So it's not a very good, good or accurate test. So the thought is the first step we would do is take maybe uh, two or three of the uh, highest performing ones we have 
and split test those. So they're all completely unique and we can just get a baseline of which one is it, which one of these seems to perform better or speak better to the customer. So we're starting at like the big top of the funnel, you know, and going to work yeah. our way down. Um, and then the next step would be, okay, now we've selected it's landing page B that seems to be doing the best for us. So let's focus on B. And then we can do some of those things like change the text uh, in the call to action button or move the testimonials around like you were saying. So is that like a, a good example of something you could do or would you have different recommendations for me yeah i think that's a really good idea to do like you say you you got to remember like that first test is going to be very broad but um compared to what you're doing currently obviously like you say you're testing against different demographics and different markets so the data is almost meaningless in a way because what one state might like versus another could be very different we don't know yeah kentucky so, is like, a lot different than florida you know it's it's <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So if you can combine those three designs, and even if you use all three of those targeted to each location, you could see, okay, like exactly like you said, you could be like, right, B really works well in this location, A really works well there. Okay. And then like you say, you go down the lines of refinement further from there. Yeah. And I've even considered like, uh, and we've kind of done this on our landing pages a little bit. So uh, we've done some that are like, you know, the background and the hero sections, like a happy family, like their problems are solved. And then we've done some where like, you know, it's doom and gloom, like you better call us now because your house is going to fall apart if you don't, you know, so <laughs> kind of completely changing that message to like, we're going to come in and solve everything to you better call us or your life's going to be hell. You know, that's kind of a cool thing to split test and see in this market, you know, uh, what works better with people? Is it the fear tactics or is it the, you know, the happy family at the end? Yeah, what the emotional trigger is for the audience, really. Exactly. Yeah. And like you say, the thing is, we always have a good idea. I mean, I think, like I say, we all, you know, build websites dating down. We have a kind of good idea of what makes a good website, what I'd like to think we do. Um, but we never truly know until we put it out there. And even sometimes I'm surprised, like sometimes you go, huh, that done better than I thought it would, and, and vice versa, you know. So it's good to have that hard data. I definitely think it backs up any opinion you have with the client. Um, and it just makes the world a difference, really. It really does. And like I say, if um, some people roll it into a care plan service, some people sell it as an add-on. Um, so it's a good way to boost your revenue as well. Yeah, and I mean, clients love it too because, you know, you're, you're delivering them hard data and, you know, being able to say, you know, I did this and it, it performed this well, you know, that, that's such a hands-on approach that, you know, a, a lot of developers in my area, you know, they, they don't really do that. And so, you know, they, they hand over the keys to a website and, you know, it's, it's done. They, they may do maintenance or, or, you know, just keeping it up to date. But yeah, I think being able to add this to, uh, to what you offer your clients is a, is a huge thing. And you kind of, because it is data and because you are delivering stuff, like you're almost on their team, you know, even more so. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just, it also kind of gives you an excuse too to, uh, to reach out more frequently, which that, that alone generates a lot more revenue, you know, just being able to, uh, to have that excuse to say, Hey, you know, Bob's pizza place, this is, this is what's been going on. Just reaching out is a huge thing. And this is such a, a an easy excuse to do that. Absolutely, yeah. And like I say, there's a couple of ways you're going about it. Obviously, it's a conversation you can have with a client and say, look, we should try this digital marketing strategy and explain it and, and you know, offer it as an upsell. Um, and likewise, you could kind of do it off your own back as well. You could kind of say like, hey, I haven't really told you guys, but I've been doing a bit of split testing for you. I've been running it for a month and these are the results. Um, I think we can get better than that. It's going to cost you 2 99 a month let's keep going. And, and because I've done this, this has generated 25% more inquiries because we found a better version. And that's it. You know, straight away, they're going to be like, huh, 25% more leads. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, th th let's do that. You know? <laughs> yeah, um, no, that makes a lot of sense. Because then, you know, they're not, it's, it's, it's a lot less of a gamble if you've already come to them and said, you know, here's, here's the increase. Let's, let's do it better. So whatever you're, you're spending, like your yeah. ROI is going to be there. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it really makes a, a hell of a difference when people are running Google ads or social media ads, because if we can get that conversion up and the cost down, that's what everyone's looking for. You know, um, I actually run a separate business and it's exactly the same thing. If I can get my costs on the ads lower and get my conversions higher, then it's a no brainer. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think a lot of what we do is like web designers um, in the client's eyes, 
our our work is very subjective like does the website yeah. look pretty can i find stuff on it but there's no like you know it's not something you can measure super easily the things your clients are thinking about so when you can actually come back to them and say you know a lot of times we're we're battling against other people for proposals or or this and that and when you can come back to them and say hey listen i'm i'm not only going to make you this website that looks good i'm going to have data that proves to you that we're going to keep improving the functionality of it and getting you more results from it i mean that's going to stand you uh, heads and shoulders above some of your competitors who aren't even thinking of things like that. So, I mean, I, I see a clear path from this going all the way from, you know, writing a proposal to getting people on care plans that go on, um, you know, for an extended period of time, like split hero and split testing can be a big part of that entire customer life cycle. Yeah, exactly. And like you say, you're, li you're literally just giving the client value all the time. Um, and like you say, it's an excuse for another touch point. You're keeping in communication with them, and it keeps you at the forefront of their mind as well. Because most of the time, like I, I, I've been guilty with this myself as well years ago. Like I say, if you just leave a client for a month at a time and don't really touch base after a build, like they kind of resent paying the maintenance fee and whatnot because they don't really know what you're doing and so on. So like I say, if you can keep that communication up there and like say offer these solutions. Um, then yeah, it's it really is a no brainer. I think it's it's the way things are going. It seems to be I don't know if I've just got really lucky, but it seems to be this is the year everyone sort of started to really focus on conversion optimization and starting to I think like uh, I, I know you're doubling SEO as well and stuff like that and getting the traffic is obviously the hardest part. But then if we can get more out of that traffic, then you know, that that's like if you convert more and you don't, you're sort of throwing money away, <laughs> you know, so you've done the hard bit. Let's just try and squeeze every dollar we can out of the traffic you're getting. Um, and that's really what we try and focus on. And you talk about like uh, staying in contact with your customers who are on care plans. So I've struggled with that myself. I, I guess we're kind of staying on topic here, but it's it came to my mind. So, you know, one thing you see a lot of people do with their care plan customers is send them a report every month and they're super freaking boring. It says, I updated so many plugins and, you know, your uptime was this and no customer wants to read that. They don't care. You might as well be sending them garbage. Like they, yeah. I don't send those out because I know my customers don't give a shit. Like they don't want yeah. that. Yeah, but now if I could send them a report that said, Hey, this test we've been running here, are the results of it. And here's how much more money I'm putting in your pocket. Uh, they're going to read that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's the, one of the key things that, uh, I, well, I think Google does it, but in a roundabout way, but we're going to offer white label reporting it hopefully shortly after release. Um, so yeah, that that's going to be a big one. Is you'll have a report with your own logo on, so you can go to the client and be like, "Hey, you can you can keep a copy of this. You can email it to them, depending on how you want to do it. Um, you might want to be like, I've done this. Let's hop on a, a call, hop on a Zoom, and then show them over screen share and talk about it. Um, you know, there's so many ways to present it. But yeah, that that's a real big thing for Split Heroes, the white uh, white label reporting. I was quite passionate about. Yeah, I can see. I mean, being part, you know, you've had done agency work for a long time, so I can see yeah. how you're going to have a nice advantage. You know, that's one of those things, like you said, uh, you did come at this at a good time. Like you had this idea at a really good time when I think a lot of us are being more focused on this. And I think you're in a good position to being that you've ran an agency for many years and you kind of know how all this works with clients. You know how this works from your own business standpoint, where if if this was just some developer who said, oh, somebody said something about split testing, I'm going to make this, this plug in, you know, they're not going to have all that, um, you know, experience and knowledge and knowing kind of what the customers want. So I think you're in a, I'm kind of jealous. I mean, I'm glad we're friends, but I'm kind of jealous. I didn't think of this first. Yeah, I mean, the idea has been sort of uh, on my mind for about two years. It's actually been a really long time. Um, and I've always, every time I've gone to do something about it, like I've come across something else and thought, oh, actually, that's really close. I'm not quite sure there's enough room in the market. And uh, is the market ready was always a big one. And like I say, like we just said, now I feel the market is getting ready to, to accept it as part of sort of mainstream. Um, 
I mean, because a lot of agency owners I speak to, and even myself as well in the early days, yeah, sort of split hit, split testing. Oh, what's that? I, oh, yeah, I don't really want to do that. It's, it's complicated. You know, I don't. A lot of agency owners are sort of um, a bit shy to admit that they don't know anything about split testing, and that's what I'm trying to break down that barrier. Is be like, it's not complicated. Let's just tackle it, and I'll show you how it's going to make a difference to your business, to make a difference to clients' businesses. Um, but yeah, so like I had the idea for about two years, then. I saw uh, Seed Prod for Beaver Builder. Um, they launched a split testing plugin um, roughly around about the time I had the idea. And I was like, huh, that's not very helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, they've since abandoned that plugin, funny enough. But um, yeah, like, you know, but I, I've decided there's enough space in the market for everyone. And I'm going to focus on what we're going to be good at doing and worry, not really worry about everyone else. Um, which I know Beaver team has just released theirs as well. Um, which I wish them all the best. But again, we're slightly different markets as well. So yeah, it's not, nothing's quite the same. Yeah, there's always room for more things. I, I'm, I, I don't think you're going to have a problem with that. You know, I think the, the, the barrier of entry, and I think there's some you see people talk about in a lot of groups, like uh, is our job as web designers getting a lot harder because the barrier of entry to becoming a web designer has gotten a lot lower. So like you were doing this, I forget what you said, nine years ago. So Seven, you weren't eight, using yeah. page builders and stuff like that. I'm only here because I uh, found WordPress and Beaver Builder already existed. Had Beaver Builder not existed, I wouldn't be sitting here today because I wouldn't have found an easy way to take my years of design experience and easily translate that into a web business. So now that it's so easy, you need an internet connection and a computer and you can literally make a website, I think finding things like this for our our businesses are going to be crucial to making sure we're setting ourselves apart uh, when we're going after jobs and stuff like this. And this is a a really no-brainer way to show value to your clients. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've got some really big ideas. I'm trying not to say too much. I don't want to overpromise myself, but um, like, I, I would love to get to the point. And like, uh, I think Pete Everett might be helping me with it as well. Um, where we're going to collab on doing a course on split testing. So basically, when you sign up for Split Hero, you and it will be part of his courses as well, which you'll get free. You, you'll basically get free access to a course, and that will show you how to how to sell split testing, you know, how to work it into your agency, how to use it as an upsell, how to put it into a care plan. And basically, so again, I'm just taking down that barrier really. So agencies can sign up and be like, cool, like I've got a tool, I know how to use it now. And this is how I use it for the benefit of the business in terms of financially. Um, so yeah, we're trying to do a bit of education along the way. Yeah, I think that's that's super important as well. And and you know, just having these conversations is good. I mean, I don't think there's a website on the planet you probably couldn't do something to start split testing too. So it's applicable to every one of your clients. You know, yeah. uh, you can always do something there. You you need a goal if you have a website. So there's going to be ways to kind of test that. So uh, I do want to talk a little bit about how people can. Um, you know, I'm sure we got people on here. I had to close my chat, Matt. So if there's anybody asking questions on the live stream. Um, I've said everyone's asleep. Don't worry. Yeah, they're all asleep. Um, just say that there's thousands of them, but we don't have time to get to them if they're not asking any questions. Um, so I actually uh, bought my license to Split Hero during your pre-sale, which I'm pretty sure cur- I'm correct that you already maxed out the number of licenses yes. you were going to sell for that, right? Yeah, we sold out, which was fantastic. Because again, like I said, we never really know what we get sort of getting into as such. Um, so the pre-sale was to fund the the further development, um, which we was always upfront about. But yeah, we we absolutely sold out, which is fantastic. We sold out. I think it was about two and a half weeks. Wow. So I, I I couldn't ask for more than that. You know, we got the money we needed plus a little bit more um, to fund the development and to see us through for you know the a good initial stage anyway for a bit of marketing and whatnot um so yeah really it's um like i've really been really sort of chuffed really i just can't express how grateful i am and people will support it well i i will do my best I, I think there might be a couple other members of the admin bar who got in on the early bird special and are already uh already a part of the the uh, team there, but uh, I'll make sure to keep everybody updated when I start uh, getting some cool rollouts. I'm going to give people some sneak peeks and get them excited about it. So when do you think this is going to be on sale for the general public? When, when can they get their hands on it and how can they keep informed about um, what all is going on with Split Hero? 
Yeah, sure. So um, you can go to splithero.com now and there is uh, a few sections on different pages. There's a road to sign up for the newsletter and that will keep you up to date with when we're going to release any information and bits and pieces like that. Um, there's also a demo on there, but it's a very restricted demo because it was from before our pre-sale. So it was um, basically what was funded up to that point with my own money. So there's a very limited demo, so I wouldn't worry too much about playing with that because we've got a lot of big changes in plan for that. <laughs> um, but we're looking to launch at the end of April. So that that's our goal, the end of April. Um, and I'm actually going on holiday stateside as well, so I don't know if I'm absolutely mad trying to do both things at once. But um, my idea is to work support while I'm on holiday. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But no, it's, I, I've got things in place. I've got uh, developers basically going to be looking after it while I'm away. But yeah, I'm sure your wife's super excited about that. Yeah, you can imagine how chuffed she is. Yeah, she's really pleased. Where are y'all going <laughs> in, in the States? We're, we're going back to Florida. So, okay. Uh, she's uh, Disney mad. So yeah. yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> nice. But yeah. So a- end of April. Um, and our pricing is going to start at $27 a month um, for one domain and one or two current tests. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm sure the details are on the site. The details are on there. Yeah. So, so are there going to be any kind of plans if people want to do more domains like this customer that I have, uh, had, had I not got in on the early sale, uh, he probably has like 30 customers. So yeah. is there going to be some options for, for bigger agencies? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> this is where we're a little bit different because I like to be different and it's either the best move ever or it's a terrible idea. Um, but obviously I always relate it to my own agency life in terms of looking at hosting. Um, we look at hosting, there's a one site plan, a five and a 10. And I always used to feel really sort of a bit miffed when you get to six sites, but you got to pay for the 10 site plan. You're sort of like, man, I don't really want to pay for 10 because I'm only using six right now. So this is going to be totally flexible. So you can literally upgrade and downgrade domains and tests as you need. Um, so every add-on domain will have a flat fee per month, which I believe off the top of my head is priced at $5 a month. Um, and each time you add a domain, it will add two tests or one test, whatever it was. Um, so like I say, if you turn around and you have five customers out the gate and say, yeah, we want to be part of this great you can scale up to five if a few drop off you can scale it down so you're only paying for what you actually use um which i think is important so yeah hopefully i I want to throw matt this question real quick okay so let's say you buy it and you're just using it for yourself and that's covering the cost of the the initial license if it costs you five extra dollars to add this to a customer site how much are you going to turn around and charge the customer to do that Uh, like what's your roi going to be but uh it's certainly going to cover the uh the five dollars yeah that's going to be a no-brainer for sure i I really like the way you got that worked out so i appreciate that that makes a lot yeah exactly yeah because well the thing is everyone's needs are different for example you might have uh, like i said you might have 30 customers so you're gonna need 30 domains and 30 tests but you might have two customers but they might want loads of testing so you're gonna need 25 tests so you can buy tests as well not just domain mm-hmm. so you can buy like um i think we're doing the test at two dollars each a month so again you can just scale up to what you need um and it is it, like i say that way it makes it suitable for everyone's needs yeah that's super exciting that was one thing i didn't even know about so i'm, I'm excited about that because i was wondering how that was going to work out um work out on that end matt do you have any questions you want to add here before we start wrapping this thing up today <clears throat> questions no but i do want to mention that uh you know split split testing and and doing this type of thing um and getting that uh that data back is it, it, it pretty much writes a case study for itself which can go on yeah. your site which is extra marketing for you and when you start doing this and you, you start seeing results and you can you know you see a similar problem with a with another client like it makes it easier to build for that other client and sitting down in that first meeting and saying you know these are the things that i can do like you're gonna you're gonna win more clients this way i mean it's it's awesome you know and because you'll have those case studies from prior clients it's really easy to bring up really natural to uh to bring into a a conversation with that that new client and say this is this is the data this is the exact numbers that i did for another client and i can do this for you i mean it's it's not just for your clients this is a marketing tool for you i mean it's i am super yeah. pumped about this like it's it's gonna be a blast you found your new spokesperson he's I a good looking guy adam i'll send you the money later don't worry <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Adam, did we miss anything that you wanted to make sure you got across on here? No, I think that covers everything. But like I say, um, I'm totally approachable if anyone's got any questions or just wants to even chat split testing as a general. Like I'm not going to hard sell anyone. So um, they can reach out to me. I'll be on Facebook or like uh, email address is hello at splithero.com. Um, I've got a couple hello. of social as well. Sorry. But, I just... yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, but people can reach out if they want to or, yeah. Well, awesome, man. I, I I really appreciate you coming on here. And like Matt, I'm pretty excited about how all this is going to work out because I think you've pretty much nailed a system that's a no-brainer for uh, agencies like ours. I mean, I don't see how you wouldn't get your money back out of this right away and start making money on top of it. And there's not a ton of products that kind of give you that instant ROI. So I'm excited about it. I think you're going to make a killing. So don't forget about us little <laughs> people when you're all big time. Well, yeah, fingers crossed, eh? <laughs> we we were friends long before Split Hero, so I expect we're going to remain friends. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, I do got a little bit of housekeeping I want to get to before we say bye to you. Um, like I said, next week on episode 20, Matt and I are going to be looking back at some of the, the biggest takeaways we've learned from guests. I mean, really, me and Matt are like a conduit for all this awesome information that's out there from all these great people. Um, so we get just as much out of this as anybody else. So we're going to kind of, we split up all the episodes um, and we're going to go th uh -oh. through and pick like, the takeaways we had from those uh, and go through those. Do what? You just froze up a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, man, <laughs> that internet connection. Um, so we're going to go through those episodes. We're also going to be answering your questions. So if you have questions, you can go inside the group. And there's a thread going right now with me with like a, a stupid hat on with like America flag on it. Uh, so look for that picture and you can ask your questions. Also, uh, the people over at Brainstorm Force are celebrating their 10-year anniversary in business, which is pretty damn awesome. Um, and they're celebrating that by giving 25% off of all of their products. So Astra, Schema Pro, Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor, and Beaver Builder. Um, they got a whole ton of them, and they're offering 25% off of all of those for the next couple days, which is uh, which is the sale that they do during Black Friday. So we're about nine months away from that now. Uh, so if you want to get your hands on that, it also works for your upgrades. So if you're due to upgrade soon, save yourself 25% on all that. And if you'd like, we have a couple affiliate links associated with Brainstorm Force for the products that me and Matt use. Uh, Astra, Schema Pro, and Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor. So you can go to the adminbar.com and look for our recommendations uh, page, which has all those links on there. So before I close this out, Adam, I do want to say thank you very much for joining us on the show again. Uh, I definitely want to have you back on at the, uh, let's say, the beginning of May once everything's launched and uh, yeah. start promoting this and get everybody signed up because I think it's going to be a home run. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. And like I say, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, we appreciate it too. So remember guys, if, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us back is to share the content, subscribe to us through your podcast service or YouTube. And of course, if you want to use our affiliate links, we would greatly appreciate that. It's all free. It takes a little time and it greatly helps support the show. So that is all for now. We will catch all of you inside the group. I gotta shut my Alexa off because. Sorry, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs>